Women in Tech Take Your Career to the Next Level by Tara Wheeler, forward by Esther Dyson. Forward. As you read this book, you'll bring to it your own goals and history, and that's the point. Women are not all alike. Your challenge in life is not to live as a woman, but to live as your own unique self. So in this forward, I speak only for myself. I feel comfortable with the culture of technology and science, and I try to think logically and rationally. I've been part of the tech community since the 1970s. I got into it because it was the most interesting thing happening at the time. I studied economics in college, took a job as a fact checker for Forbes, then an investor magazine, shortly after graduating. I loved researching tech businesses. They had not just the financial process but also the social and intellectual elements to keep me interested. Artificial intelligence, online communication, the internet was not yet a thing, and I worked on a manual typewriter and got press releases by fax. Almost 40 years later, with new technology still emerging, I'm still watching with fascination, and I'm still learning as the active founder of a non-profit startup focused on health. If I can tell you anything, it's this. Find your own success. Don't let your mother or boyfriend or colleague define it for you. Try to create your own job. If you want to found companies, do that. I haven't worked for anyone since I was 30-something. That may not be your thing. Challenge is how to go from where you are to where you want to be, not where someone else wants you to be. You always have an alternative. I'm happy doing what I love. You have to see the whole spectrum from of what's available to you. I was fired at Forbes and it wasn't the end of my life. I'm still here. You're the actor running your own life through a script you write not an automaton, helplessly following its program. Don't choose a script that limits you. I had a lot of wonderful choices, but I know a lot of people who didn't and don't. Bad things may happen, but you can still decide how to deal with them. There's help out there for you, and a lot of it is in this book. Everything sounds easy in theory. Have an idea from a company, sell it five years later, and retire. In practice, it's much more complicated than that. People don't understand how complex life, tech, and business are, and they focus more on a job title instead of what they want to do. The bravery of the women writing in this book and sharing their lives with you is inspiring. They're showing you from the inside what it's really like to make the best choice possible in impossible situations. You're not defined by what other people think you are or what you used to be. You are defined by your actions. Hear the advice and stories here. Make your own choices, accept the consequences, and live your own life. Esther Dyson. Introduction. Tech. It's a scary world to a lot of people. It describes a field of endeavors, career, style of thinking, and our goals for the future. In the 1400s, the forefront of human thought was alchemy and astronomy. In the 1500s, the place to be was natural philosophy. In the 1600s, mathematics. In the 1700s, political science. The most creative people are drawn to the field of human endeavors in which the biggest advances are being made. Now tech is the place to be. So why does it seem as if women, who make up 51% of the world's population, just can't manage to break into the most exciting field of human endeavors on the planet today? I have a very scary statistic for you. The number of women working in computer science and achieving computer science degrees achieved its height 31 years ago. In 1984, 38% of computer science degrees were awarded to women. In 2014, less than 10% were. No matter how many role models, mentors, the larger the life, super heroines, exist in popular media, we are failing. We are failing to bring women into technology in the first place. The number of women in technology is dropping every year. There are a number of potential reasons why women in technology don't seem to mix. I've heard people talk about sexism, discrimination, biological imperatives, evolutionary, and social preferences, and a host of other reasons why women just don't seem to be a good fit in the technological field. You know what? I don't give a damn why someone else thinks I don't belong. I love technology, and I feel joy every single day that I get to invent something new, bring people a new perspective, invent a new automated process that gives time back to someone else, or make the world a better place. I realize that technology can seem like a field that just doesn't have a place for women, and I want to do something to change that. It turns out that the reason we just don't think women would be a good fit in technology is unconscious social bias, not any kind of conspiracy. Screaming at men for being sexist doesn't lead to anything except for defensiveness and counterattacks. Most men in tech are just people interested in creating a great life for themselves and are willing to help others if they're given a plan and not blamed for everything wrong in the world. The best way to combat unconscious social bias is to bring it into the open and see all the ways in which women not only can but should be part of technology. I really like men. I dig them just fine. Most of my friends are men. I married a particular spectacular example of the gender. I generally tend to get along better with men. I don't know if that's because of the way I've been socially conditioned or if it's just the way I'm built, but I frequently find myself in the position of translating one gender to another in technology. The thing I found to be the most effective in changing people's minds, the heart is telling the stories. Often I relate the stories of women I know who've been successful and let people draw their own conclusions. Real empathy is the only true answer to the women in technology problem. Wouldn't it be wonderful if six-year-old girls, 13-year-old girls, 33-year-old girls, 72-year-old girls, 
all realized that they had a place and a purpose in the most exciting field of exploration right now. I want to build space robots. I want to develop a way for people who've never spoken the same language to chat with each other from 10,000 miles away and experience translation in real time. I think that if I want public information and it's not readily available to me, I can and should find a way to make it accessible via the internet. I think that I should be able to play beautiful, innovative, and imaginative games that have protagonists to whom I can relate. For that to happen, we need diverse voices and technology. The old model of just Hiring your friend buddies has led to a critical shortage of unique points. It's time to change this depressing statistic. It's time to buck the trend. In this book, in addition to giving you advice on some simple ways to forge your own path in your tech career, I'm going to share the autobiographies of seven amazing women in seven different fields of technology. You'll find out what it's like to have children while working a high-pressure programming job. You'll learn what it's like to be a cyber warrior in Israel. You'll learn what it's like to emigrate from Jamaica as a technologist. You'll learn what it's like to transition to a different gender while trying to keep your servers from transitioning to a defunct state. You'll even find out what it's like to be driven from your own home for standing up for the rights of women game developers to tell the stories they want to tell. These women are actual technologists. Every single person in this book is a developer, architect, programmer, or hacker. They're not going to offer you any advice. They're just going to tell you who they are, why they made the choices they did, and why they love technology so much. You will come away from this book with a deep understanding of, of the different perspectives of women in tech, as well as their goals and their reasons for going into the field. You'll learn how you can create the best possible tech career for yourself while acknowledging the discrimination and sexism rampant in the industry. Finally, you'll know better than ever before why it is that you should or shouldn't go into tech. I promise you this, by the time you're done reading this book, you will know what it's like to be a woman in technology. You should be able to do what you choose with your life, and you shouldn't close off technology as a potential field for your career because you're afraid of the stories you've heard about how hostile the environment is to women. Technology is not a monolithic field full of jackasses. Well, it is, in fact, literally sprinkled with jackasses, but that's true of just about any field. Mostly technology is full of weird, misunderstood, somewhat awkward, and generally well-meaning human beings. If you've ever felt as if you don't belong, chances are you're going to find plenty of friends in tech who know just how you feel. We are the weird ones. We're the ones who stayed after school and did extra homework. We're the ones who programmed in 4chan while sporting mohawks. We're the ones who had no patience for being told this is how it's always been done. We're the ones who knew there was a better way to do it. We're the ones who ignore the rules and made up our own. We're the ones who know what it's like to be an outsider. We think you should join us. Maybe you think that you had to start programming computers at the age of five to be able to get a computer science degree. Go work for a big tech company. Maybe you think you're not smart enough. Maybe you think you just don't fit in. Well, you're right about not fitting in. None of us fit in anywhere. I can tell you this though. Only two people in this entire book have computer science degrees. I didn't start programming until I was 23. I'd built some computers before that and I'd been around them for some time, but the thought that I could be a technologist never even entered my mind while I was young. I started as a human communications major and ended up in complex systems and political science. Still, I've been a scientist and system engineer my entire life, even when I didn't know the words for these things. For more than a decade, I've been working in technology in one way or another, and there's nothing stopping you from joining the technological field at any age and with any degree or None at all. Nothing irritates me more than hearing women tell me, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I could never do what you do. I'm just not smart enough. Let me assure you that, in fact, there are smart people in tech, dull people in tech, and everyone in between. I've been in academia, and I've seen a lot of very, very stupid physicists succeed just fine in getting doctorates and tenure. The one thing that matters is whether or not you want to be a technologist. If you do, I will do my best to help you get there. The secret to being in technology is simple. Find the thing you love and never let it go. If you love programming or making websites or developing new technology, building robots, soldering boards, or being a hacker. Just keep doing it and we will help you find a way to make money at it. I'm nothing special when it comes to being a computer programmer. The difference between me and someone who's been a programmer for dozens of years is that I came in through the side door. I started with an outsider's view of the field and then worked my way in. I have a passion for building and understanding systems. I've been collecting data on interviewing and tech careers for years and I can tell you that the view from the outside helped me and will now help you to understand how you can succeed in tech. This perspective is what's helped me coach hundreds of women to get the job they want. It's what's let me see the difference between a woman's experience and a man's experience in tech interviews. I run workshops, speak publicly, teach extensively on all the ways that women can both be themselves and figure out how to make tech work as a career field. I'm no self-help guru. I'm just a hacker. I don't have a lot of patience for rules and people who tell me I can't do something I want to do. If you're someone who has a just-can't-quit attitude, then I think you're going to get along just fine. 
Here's what moved me to write this book. No one else has. As far as I'm concerned, that's a good enough reason to do just about anything. I know there are women who are smarter than I am, and I know for a fact that there are lots of better developers out there. I also know this. I care enough to spend years of my life trying to help bridge this gap between women and the careers they deserve to have. It's a shame and a crime to see half the potential technical talent in the world go to waste. I think I can help in some small way, and this book is my answer to not having had any of this advice when I started out. I'm trying to leave the world a better and more creative place than I found it, and I refuse to believe that women shouldn't be in technology because somehow they are biologically not suited for it. I refuse to believe that I am not as creative or as capable as my esteemed male colleagues. I believe that you should refuse to accept limitations that other people try to impose on you. I believe mentorship is the only real way to learn what you need to know in tech. I learn a great deal from my mentor and in turn teach my mentees. It's going to become your responsibility to mentor others based on what you learned from reading this book and your own experience in technology. The act of giving what you know to someone else helps you grow ever more confident in your own career and it does even more good for you than them. Mentoring is not optional. You will teach others who and what you are, whether you like it or not. So do so mindfully and remember you're always setting an example for someone. You'll find it most helpful to read this book cover to cover as opposed to a la carte. I have organized my advice and my stories as well as the stories of my contributing authors, not as a textbook, but as a journey through a technical career. We'll go through the lessons I've learned and discuss how you can apply them and hear stories from my amazing contributors right at the moment when I wish I could have heard them during my career. I can't wait to share this knowledge with you. Let's get started.